Welcome to my new series of videos and tutorials about modular synthesis. Those of you who have followed my series concerning Softcubes Modular and hopefully continue doing so, may ask why a second series explaining and demonstrating how to use modular synthesis. Well, my dear friends and followers, this series is a bit different from the others. Indeed, it's a lot different. Even if explaining the basics of modular synthesis, my videos concerning Softtubes Modular are mainly tutorials about the technology of the individual modules of the synth. They are, well, you might call them video manuals going deeper into each module than the written manual does. This series here, the series you are watching the first part of right now, is all about patching and patches. It is about strategies of how to get the sound you want using modular synthesizers. And it's about classic patches, standards from the history of using these kinds of synths. And it is about basic patches which you may look at as building stones. Building stones you can combine to bigger setups and to more complex and larger patches of your own. Of course, there are going to be explanations of the functionality of the used modules. But I'm going to talk only about these functions of the used modules which are needed for the patch I am demonstrating and explaining. I'm not going to produce an in-depth tutorial about the complete technology of certain modules in this series here. So then, let's go for it and dive into patching. And again, like in all my series, I begin with the basics. East Coast, West Coast, not to forget one of my favorites, Zero Coast. What do these terms mean and how does a, for example, East Coast patch look like? Let me take the short road. If your source of sound is one of the basic wave shapes, square, pulse or saw wave, each of them having spectra which are rich in partials, and you send these waves through a filter, a filter which subtracts some partials, some frequencies from the spectrum, then you have the simplest possible East Coast, uh, sorry, East Coast patch. <laughs> And now we can start adding components, first of which will probably be an amplifier to influence the volume. Next, we would surely want to breathe some life into the arrangement by adding some modulation, typically envelopes, which shape the development of the volume over time. And then, let's do the same with the filter's cutoff frequency. I take the gate signals from my keyboard this time. I'll explain gate, CV and trigger in a minute, or two or three.
and why only one source of sound. We could add a second one and a third and mix them together and different filters and... No, not that fast, please. <laughs> Let me rather proceed step by step and try out the sonic potential and capacity of each of these steps. And a bit more of explanation wouldn't hurt either. Well then, back to the simple oscillator. Simple oscillator plus filter combination, of course. But before having a look at these two modules, I'd like to lead your attention to the small red module in the upper left corner of the case. This module is the gateway from your door and your MIDI controller, for example your MIDI keyboard. From here we can feed in signals like pitch and gate and trigger and velocity and aftertouch and so on, which come from your door or controller and use them in our modules. I use the pitch information to control the oscillator's pitch. I'm going to use the gate signal with the envelope generators later in this video. My door is playing a little tune, so the oscillator should produce the corresponding notes, and it does. The oscillator delivers five wave shapes, so up, so down, square and pulse, sine and triangle. With the pulse wave we can adjust the duty cycle, what is the relation of the uptime to downtime of the wave using the pulse width knob and the little display above the knob shows the adjusted wave shape. The other functions of the module will be talked about in the course of the series when they are used in the patches this series is going to talk about. The filter module now. There are three different filter characteristics implemented low pass, band pass, and high pass. We adjust the cutoff frequency of the low pass and the high pass, and the center frequency of the band pass with the knob called cutoff and the filter's resonance with, well, <laughs> with the resonance knob, of course. the mentioned amplifier to the patch, the gain knob sets the output volume. I'll return to the filter module and the amplifier later in this video, but let me complete this patch at first. I add two envelope generators with attack, decay, sustain and release ADSR envelopes to the patch, one for the amplifier, the volume, and one for the filter, the cutoff frequency. An envelope generator needs the information when it should start its envelope and when a note or a keyboard keystroke ends. It's the gate signal from, the, from our door or controller that delivers that information. The envelope generators look quite straightforward, but there is more about them as it seems. Let me straighten out some facts, therefore. There are Obviously, four parameters in these envelopes. 
attack, decay, sustain and release, right? Oh, I see you nodding, but you are mistaken. There are six parameters. But where are these mysterious two additional parameters? Well, it's the zero level and the maximum level. Oh, I can see and hear some of you saying things like of course and how boring or even meaningless and uh, we cannot change these parameters, so what the hey? But you are mistaken. Again, we can change these parameters, but not with the ADSR module, but with the modules the ADSR is applied to. We must not forget this fact. Time for some practical experiments now. Attack sets the time the envelope needs to reach maximum level. Yes, I said maximum level, not sustain level. And this maximum level is the highest possible level that the parameter which is controlled by the envelope generator can reach. In our experimental patch here, it is the gain parameter. And it's similar with the minimum. If the gain of the amplifier is not completely closed, not completely at zero level, then the adjusted level of the gain is the minimum level of the ADSR envelope. Uh, by the way, we see that uh, the attack parameter generates an overhead at the maximum level with the module I'm using here. And it's similar with decay. This parameter determines the time the controlled parameter, the gain parameter in my examples here, needs to, decay, uh, to uh, decrease from uh, maximum level to, no, not to minimum level, but to the level according to the adjusted sustain parameter. With sustain at zero, that is the minimum level again. But what about the overhead, which we discovered with attack and a minimum higher than zero? Well, there is no decay time between this overhead level and the maximum level of the controlled gain parameter. Gain increases up to the overhead level, according to the attack time, and then the level jumps instantaneously down to the regular maximum level of gain and then it decreases more or less slowly down to sustain level, needing the time which is adjusted by the decay parameter. But let me go on to the sustain, sustain parameter now. Sustain is a level, not a time. 
but sustain does have remarkable influence on how long the decay time is as well as on how long the eventually existing release time is, as we will see in a minute. Well, if sustain is at a higher level, the envelope generator's output level doesn't need to climb down so far, right? The decay time is shorter, therefore. Well, and release sets the time which is needed by the envelope generator's output signal to go down from the sustain level to the adjusted minimum level of the amplifier's gain parameter. After closing the gate, what is for example after releasing the hit key or after any other kind of MIDI note off code. We are well prepared to return to our East Coast subtractive patch now. There are two envelope generators working in our patch. You may say, huh, so what? Well, both envelopes control parameters that determine whether or not a sound is produced at all. The gain parameter of the amplifier directly and the cutoff parameter of the filter by dint of the spectrum, the frequencies which are allowed to pass. The right envelope generator changes the volume and works exactly as in my last examples. The left envelope generator changes the spectrum, the timbre. The cutoff parameter of the filter is the equivalent to the gain parameter of the amplifier here. demonstrate what this means and how we can make use of this patch. And let me do that systematically. But at first, there is one fact that makes the combination envelope plus filter systematically different from the combination ampli uh, amplifier plus filter. The cutoff parameter of the filter must not be at zero. The envelope generator's attack will not open the filter to maximum then, and the patch will stay silent. We need the cutoff at least a little bit above zero. Okay, let's go for certain combinations of the two envelopes now. As both envelopes influence uh, the volume of the overall output, it should be clear that with very high, very long attacks of one of the envelopes, there will be not any audible differences um, with very low, very fast attacks of the other envelope. The fast attacks will take place while the other envelope is still at a very low or even inaudible output level.
but with one of the decay quite lo decays sorry quite long and the other quite short we get two different kinds two different families of percussive sounds with a long decay at the amplifier and a short one at the filter we get sounds like kick drums and bass drums whereas the other way meaning a long decay with the filter and a short decay with the amplifier well, we get slap bass like sounds here. With both decays at high levels, we get sounds mimicking a release phase. And when we increase the basic frequency of the oscillator a lot, there is a nice and interesting receding stage of the sound, which evocates the sound of a rubber band. Reducing the decay, introducing a bit of sustain and adding a tech leads to bass uh, to brass, sorry, to brass like sounds of different characters. I think you will have enough ideas for experiments and investigations of your own concerning the two envelopes now. Therefore I'm only going to demonstrate the two other types of filters uh, in short now and uh, leave the rest to you because I want to spend some time on adding modules to the patch still in this video.
I return to the low pass filter and add a second oscillator. I could simply feed it in the audio input of the same filter, but I would deprive myself from the possibility of determining which share each of the oscillators shall have. I insert an audio mixer between each of the two oscillators and the filter, therefore. If I want more dirt in the bass sound, just for example, um, I increase the share of the saw wave. but I want to increase the flexibility of the patch even more. Therefore, I insert a second filter, patch the oscillators directly into each of the two filters and insert the mixer between the filters and the amplifier. But, I beg your pardon, a filter without an envelope generator of its own? What a waste of possibilities! I add a third envelope generator and treat it to the second filter. Right. And here I stop adding modules to the patch for today. I stop doing so, but you shouldn't. On the, on the other hand, working with uh, the actual patch, working with it in depth, uh, will take you some days anyway. I'd rather introduce, I'd rather introduce now alternatives to some of the modules. Let me start with a different envelope generator module. The vault hitting envelope already contains an amplifier, but that's not the most important difference to the envelope generator modules which I have talked about so far. The most important differences are the possibility to choose between two kinds of curves for each envelope stage and the possibility to voltage control each of the envelope generator's stages. Okay then, let's compare the envelopes. I'm not going to use the Valt Slap envelope generator's internal VCA, but continue using our well-known amplifier from all the patches before. 
just a word about the slab envelope generator section with one input and two outputs at first. The in, uh, the input and uh, the upper output belong to the internal VCA, whereas the lower output delivers the adjusted envelope. I compare our good old red envelope generator with the soft mode of the slab envelope generator at first. I use only the filters envelope in this example. And now the red, let me call it standard envelope generator, and the hard mode of the slab envelope generator as well, as comparing the soft and the hard mode to each other. Well, the results are self-explanatory. Let me change the patch and link the slap envelope generator to the amplifier now. I do so because I want to demonstrate a bit of envelope CV controlling. It's only a quick demonstration, nothing in depth, just to show you the principle. The potis above each CV input jack adjust the positive or negative amount of CV modulation. I use the square wave output of an LFO as modulation source and I modulate only the decay parameter. Adjusting the LFO's rate and the BPM rate of my DAW leads to different results.
Well then, there are different kinds of amplifiers, different kinds of filter modules, more and different envelope generators, a whole universe of controller modules and so on. This series of videos is going to show and talk about a lot of them. But for now I say thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and to subscribe. And as uh, I make my living from producing videos like this one, it's you who decides if and how fast this series will grow. I need your donation. And the more donations a series of mine generates, the more time I invest in this series, and the less in others. You will find the donation link down in the descriptions to this video. Thank you again, and enjoy your day, Rolf.